Hey guys and gals, I am your host Mike Pugh of the FPC Virtual Channel and you're tuning in to a sensational video covering Vectary, Vectary 3.0. It's a new release for Vectary and what is Vectary? Vectary, Vectary basically is an online web-based 3D modeling software, 3D modeling tool. So if you ever use any 3D modeling software like Blender or maybe Maya or whatever type of 3d software that's out there where you can create and model 3d avatars characters humanoids objects create any kind of you know 3d scene you actually will understand to some degree what vectary does so vectary gives you a full 3d modeling suite and it gives you a rendering engine all based on being on the web so all you need is like mozilla firefox or Google Chrome stuff like that so I'm gonna be doing some fun stuff today for y'all folks to check out and hopefully you're willing to tune in and get to see what I got going it's gonna be like I said fun because from my standpoint that's what 3d is all about if you're not having fun I don't know what you're doing with it I mean some people may look at it as a business standpoint some people might, might look at it on different levels and um, what I'm doing now I'm actually looking at my smartphone so I'm going to try to tune in to see if my live session is running off of my smartphone, which is one of the only ways that I really can detect whether or not my live session is running. So I'm going to go and check it out and see if it's up. And yes, it is running. I'm live. That's pretty dope. Another way I can do it is go to the live dashboard here. And it looks like my live stream health is okay. It's orange. It should be green, but it looks like it's okay. So yeah, this is going to be fun, folks. And if you just got in to start tuning in, I really do appreciate y'all folks. Thanks a lot for showing up and checking me out. If you have any comments or questions or anything else, um, you can drop me some comments. I'm going to basically try to see um, if I can communicate off of what I see on the comment in the live session through my smartphone. So I'm just going to um, turn the media, uh, the actual audio down a little bit and wait until this ad goes away and try to get in more people see if we get we can get more people so alright so let's go with Vectary and let's play around so I have it running on two different browsers I have the opening page which is the home page Vectary.com running on on my actual Mozilla Firefox web browser and then I have one running on Google Chrome now the one on Google Chrome actually is where I created the thumbnail for this video and this actual character that you're seeing in the Vectary tool in the viewport I created her on the Autodesk character generator software tool so they have a free version for Autodesk character generator software you can go and check it out type it out on Google and I'll do that right now real quick type in Autodesk or probably one word I didn't even type it right Autodesk character generator type that out it's a hundred percent free by Autodesk and they are the I believe they the makers of um, or not makers but owners of Maya and many other software 3D software so it's a totally legit tool all you gotta do is create an account and a sign in and then you can go in and you can play with it now I'm not gonna log in and do all that stuff because this actual video is about Vectary but I wanted to talk about that just to lead into this part here that y'all folks are seeing. Now, when you first start out on Vectary, you're not going to get that much going on. You're probably going to be able to find some 3D assets, but you're not going to get that high quality 3D avatar human type of assets if you're into trying to create 3D models for humans. So, or maybe even robots, you're basically going to get what they have preset in their archives they have 3d model archives and they have primitive shapes and they have a lot of primitive um, more like um, default type of items for game development if you're trying to like create scenes and sets for game development you can use all kinds of different shapes that they offer and some of this stuff actually looks really really high quality too but it may not be exactly what you want so you might want to go outside to a third-party software a third-party tool to bring in assets onto Vectary to make that scene look a little bit better or whatever you want to do 
so I'm not gonna really get into that with this actual video in terms of showcasing that 3d asset type of you know aspect because you can go back to previous versions of Vectory Vectory 2.0 you can go into YouTube and you can watch videos about that and they showcase a lot of that stuff and that's not what this one is about this one is more about what you can do in terms of the higher scales of bringing really really high quality assets in and manipulating the graphics and being able to use the render engine that's what I like to do I like to play with render engines and ever since I got into using blender I learned how to play with blenders render engine to some degree and to bring out higher quality that I can possibly bring out the highest quality I should say that I could possibly bring out from a render a blender render so with Vectary this is what I was able to bring out in, in Vectary 2.0 and using the auto character generator from Autodesk so it is pretty powerful what you can do you just have to start to dig a little bit deeper into the settings you have the render differing settings that they have here they have a render preview right now the quality is set at ultra so they have draft they have low they have medium they have high and they have ultra now some people might ask why would I want to use Vectary over another tool another 3d software tool why would I want to pay you know versus having a free version like blender well blender is more than likely in a, in a class by itself because it has tons of differing options and tons of differing tooling capabilities all built into one but Vectary is straight up dedicated to 3d modeling in general so if y'all folks want to learn something like basics to 3d basics to 3d modeling you can use Vectary to do that with Blender, there's a lot more advanced knowledge that you should have, background knowledge you should have in order to be able to utilize it. So that's why you probably won't be able to jump onto Blender and learn it like one, two, three. But with Vectary, you can transition from Vectary to Blender and then maybe double back when it comes time for you to play with renders. Because with this render here, this kind of rendered a little bit better than the, ver the older versions of Blender. When I was using Blender 2.79, and previous versions now now that blender came up with 2.8 blender 2.8 beta now it definitely can outdo this version of Vectary and any of any previous versions of Vectary obviously but it depends on your knowledge of 3d and your knowledge of rendering and how you can manipulate the differing filters or um, how would you say the shaders so if you don't understand how to manipulate shaders you might as well try to use this because this doesn't require you to have that much shader knowledge you can use these differing options on the side of the screen and they're not really that hard they're kinda user friendly and they're not hidden so a lot of this stuff is visible all you have to do is click an icon on the left or the right and you can see what to do with blender there's a lot of stuff that's hidden so it takes a little time to build up the knowledge and to understand how to make things function because a lot of it is not visible and that's the whole thing so that's what I started to realize about 3d I started to think to myself you know over time um, how could I learn 3d if I can't see what I should be able to do you know what I'm saying and that's why I kinda like was stumped with blender I stopped using blender once I started using it the first week or so like the first two or three days I stopped using it that was like five years ago and then I got back to it I would say about a year ago and I was just tinkering around playing with it but I really wasn't using it to the full capacity that I could so I did it like this I would like bring a 3d asset from another tool like the Autodesk character generator bring it into blender and then try to play with the render engine and that's all I was able to do but in terms of modeling, I couldn't create a, a 3D avatar or human or character or anything like that. And I still haven't done that yet with Blender. But I know now I'm getting closer and closer to it. I don't know if that makes sense. But let's move on a little bit further past that point of people questioning whether they should use this or Blender or whatever the case may be. If you want to learn something, you, you're going to find that tool that you think is going to work for you and that's what I believe so it's all to each one's own you know everybody has their choice and their preference so let's go and move on we got object we got edit we got library and we have team these are the differing tabs that they have the different options that you can see as soon as you open up Vectary 
Now they also have this dark theme and they also have the white theme. I, I don't care exactly which theme it is as long as the tool works. That's how I see it. So we got edit, library, and team. If you go to edit, edit is gonna pertain to what your 3D objects are going to be, you know, whatever you're gonna do to your 3D objects. So if you wanna manipulate your 3D objects and reconstruct them, if they are um, a 3D object that you can go in and edit, then it will give you the ability to do that. So you have to click on the object. If it's a 3D asset that came from a third party, it may not be editable. Like this particular asset here, I can't go in and edit it. It says not editable. You see that? So that's something that's somewhat new to me in this uh, version of v Vectary 3.0. I believe in a previous version of Vectary, I was able to go in and edit it and try to change the contours of that actual asset. So now they, they made it where certain assets can't be edited. So let's go in and try to click on the actual chair. This chair, pretty high quality chair that she's sitting on, came from Vectary uh, 2.0. So I don't know if I can click it, if it's clickable. It's not allowing me to click it. And probably because, you know, it's doing a lot of different stuff. Actually, let me take the render off so that if I shut the render down, it may give me some abilities back, which sometimes it has some glitches that I've noticed where I'm not able to do certain things because of it, it trying to do too much in, in the background. So right now I'm trying to click on the chair, but it's clicking on her. So, you know, this is the kind of stuff that you're going to realize when you're using certain tools and you're going to say to yourself, like, why isn't it functioning the way that I want it? So I, had, I have those issues every now and then. So what I'm doing now, I'm actually using my left click mouse button and I'm just trying to navigate the screen and trying to move around just to gear myself so I can get a good position on clicking the object. So now I clicked on the chair and the chair also isn't editable. So they may have permissions built in where only certain objects are editable and certain objects are not editable you know that kind of thing now I do know that her eyes are editable so I can go in and try to click on her eyes I believe let's see and there you go so I just now clicked on her left eye and this is a her right eye and then they have other aspects and elements built in um, one of the newer things um, in terms of Vectory 3.0 which is different from Vectory 2.0 and Vectory 1.0 is that they have this thing known as subsurface or subdivision surface, which is available in Blender and many other 3D modeling software. So I guess their upgrade came at a time where they wanted to be able to compete and also keep up with what's going on out there in terms of all of the 3D a asset software tools that are available prior to Vectory being created. And Vectory, I believe, is like a year and a half or so old. It may be a little less than that or more than that. I, I remember um, finding Vectory about a year ago or so. So let's see. We got the chair. So now, yeah, I'm selected on the chair. And how you can tell what model that you're selected on, it turns yellow. It highlights in yellow. And then you can maneuver it and move it. You can scale it. You can play around with these different, uh, they call this a, a more like a 3D cursor but it's also known as a um i think it's a not a gimbal is it a gimbal let me see it's a let's see a gizmo they call it a, a gizmo which is different from blenders blender has a 3d cursor and then they have um more like uh i think it is a gizmo on blender yeah they do have a gizmo so the difference with with both of them is that this one you can go local global uh you can reset position you can reset orientation you can hide you can do all kinds of different things with the gizmo and if you right click it I think it changes gives you the option to change I'm not sure exactly but I remember there's ways to manipulate it you can also move this over here and you can move the object if you move the gizmo in the center now uh, if you make an error like I just did you can um, use the Control Z button to undo. So let's try that. Control Z and get her back in the chair. 
So, you know, there's different things that you can do. And these uh, arrows give you the ability to slide in those directions in 3D space. So, and I have to control Z again. Back that up. And for some reason, my control Z sometimes isn't working right. It put it in the wrong position and it's not going back. See that? So it's kind of touchy, touchy feely this this tool. So hopefully that's a good position that she's sitting on right there. Yeah, she's sitting on it and it's not bad, not a bad position. Actually, let me just move it over a little bit and let me change the space to see if it's a uh, there it is, global space. And then I'm actually moving her. It's all good. So there you go. Actually, let me move her again. Um, change the gimbal to global. And move her back like that. So yeah, I mean, it's, it's really a dope tool, folks. You can play around and you can really do some different stuff. You can mess around with the environment if you want to change the environment. Like her environment is kind of like dull right now. I would like to play around and bring in more 3d assets to light up the scene maybe put her in a room or something like that right now it's just more like a studio environment space or something that she's in um, one of the things about the navigation navigation is pretty simple um, when you scroll the scroll wheel you have to actually aim the mouse where you want to scroll it at in order to get it to move maneuver in more like a centered position or something like that you have to put it in different different areas like this and then scroll it and maybe put a direct dead center and then you're able to get closer and closer to the accuracy of where you want to position and then rotation is a left click mouse button and um, moving the mouse from left to right or up and down is really that part is really not that that complicated now in terms of getting into the modeling side let's get rid of this and scrap this part and go to menu and I'm gonna go to back to my project so y'all folks can see the modeling side so I shouldn't have saved it by the way but I just saved saved that which I'm not worried about it I'm gonna try it to attempt to do something similar to this and bring another character in maybe from blender and then at the tail end of this live session I'll try to move the project as a 3d object file to blender now um, one of the things that they changed is the subscription base. They have subscription levels for you to be able to output and export. I should say not output, but export your content that you create on it. So um, you have differing levels of subscriptions. So some people may question whether or not they should do that or not. Um, I think that the free version gives you the ability to create a render and to send that render to an image file. So. For those who use Blender for rendering purposes, maybe they might want to try this and see if it works as well and see if they can compare and contrast the rendering options and different things like that. But Blender pretty much isn't useful unless you go into the level of creating animations and or you want to use it as more of like an Instagram 2D image type of thing. So you're taking the renders and turning them into 2D images for Instagram or maybe mock-ups for uh, a website for a business business website or whatever and you just trying to get product placements and make things look a certain way or whatever you know what I'm saying so you get you could think about vector like that as well for the image side because if you're not into animation you might as well try it right because that level is free in order to get the graphic I believe so let's go in we're gonna create a new project and I'll show y'all folks that part of how to get the the graphic to show the graphic comes from the render option you go to render and then over here it says download image so you just go up to the render option and whatever 3d assets you have in your scene that you created you can download it once you're done rendering you go from this draft area you go to ultra to get the highest level and it will get rid of the grid in the background and then it will give you the ability to download that image based on whatever level you want the image to come out come out as an exported file 
so you can add effects as well you can put bloom saturation contrast color filters uh, color balance vignette noise exposure whatever you can play around with these differing levels and to get the best render like y'all folks saw with that character it, it was pretty pretty good you know it wasn't that bad it wasn't low quality it was definitely on a higher scale than the average that's what I believe for, for that uh, Autodesk character generator character that I brought in and I like I said I created her here um, all different types of parts I put together pieced together and then I brought her to blender and I I actually texture painted her original outfit and got rid of the style of the original outfit and made that that style myself which got me thinking that maybe I can become a more of a uh, 3d artist when it comes to creating visual effects for outfits different stylish stuff I don't know you know you gotta think of yourself as what you want to do in the future with your skills that you gain over time you know if you don't do that then you know also what are you doing besides not having fun if you're not having fun in 3d and you're creating 3d models and doing all this stuff then what are you doing and also if you're not setting yourself up in the future to say to yourself what am I gonna do with my skills in terms of career base am I gonna set it as a career is it just gonna be a hobby if you don't do that with yourself I'm gonna say to you what are you doing what why are you doing 3d you know think things of that nature you should think about you know so now we got this running we want to go with the object a basic object right so we're gonna click on object if you don't know how to create an object from scratch you want to create a primitive object which is a box a sphere a cone cylinder tube torus polyhedron capsule square plane circle plane or shadow plane so you have all these options to play with when you first start out and they known as primitive shapes in 3d so most uh, 3d modeling software start out with a primitive shape that's why blender starts out with a cube in the dead center zero 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 position on the screen now let me go out of the the render and um, bring back the actual grid so you can see what what it does with the grid so I did kinda screw up something over here alright I didn't screw it up uh, I just changed to a different option without realizing so we're gonna go to draft we're gonna stop the render preview when you do that it brings back the grid and then you can see that zero 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 position that I talked about regarding blender and I like to re refer to blender because blender is like my learning stage that I'm in right now so we got um the green axis the blue axis and the purple axis and basically that's the zero 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 position right here in the dead center of it so we got the maybe the Y Z I don't know which one is Y and Z there, there gotta be a way to find it so you can go to menu and then just search through settings and try to figure out what axes is what you know different things like that just look around on the screen everywhere you can and eventually you'll start to realize certain things and what applies to what that's what I recommend for those who are brand new to Vectory but um let's bring in an object so we're gonna bring in like well I just not brought in a, a box or a cube in error by error but uh yeah we'll bring in a cube since blender starts out like that and it brought it in the zero 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 position let me do control Z to back it up and to prove that to yourself you have to turn it upside down and you can see it on the grid it snaps to this grid and that's the zero zero position right there for sure I just moved it like half a box away they have little grid boxes so you can like measure if you into AutoCAD and stuff like that and you can tell um, differing positional notations or orientations of your 3d asset it helps you to get a you know a grip on where you're at in 3d space pretty much so there we go we got that and say we want to start editing we can't edit right now because we're not in edit mode now with blender blender has differing modes well this one also has differing modes but it's only one per se on this tool you got the render option which is not really a render mode it's just render option and then you have an edit so the edit is the edit mode it also is known as converting to geometry so you're gonna have to convert your 3d asset into a geometric option to to actually go in and dig into the editing 
aspects of it, which brings you down to the vertices where you can sense and you can detect the vertices. You can also sense and detect um, the lines that connect together to create the 3D asset through vertices and the faces. So we're going to go bake, and that's basically the basics to uh, 3D is lines, vertices, and faces. That's how it all starts. Um, you'll learn that from Blender as well. If you go into your Blender help area and then you go to the reference for it, you'll learn that stuff. It shows the basics to 3D. So you have options to be able to change um, how you're going to look at your 3D asset. So this is more like a digital view and visualization of your 3D asset. It gives you the ability to move the points. So you can, when I say points, I mean vertices. You can move the lines, line segments that, that help to create the 3D shape. And you can also move the faces. And when I say move, literally you can move them. See that? You can move them out of position. Um, with Blender, you would have to right click to send it back. But with this tool, it's not the same. So you have to do Control Z to, to send it back. So now it becomes a, a matter of what do you want to create in your imagination also. So you have to start to use your imagination because now I, I already know how to pull and push. What should I do next? You know what I'm saying? So do I want to turn this into a plane? Do I want to turn it into a tree? Do I want to turn it into X this or that or Y that or whatever? Also, you have tools over here while you're in edit mode. It switches the orientation of um, the toolbar so it goes from object so I guess this is object mode just like in blender and then this is the edit mode so you'll have to switch to you know whatever tool that you're looking to utilize and right now is not giving me the ability to click them and probably because I'm highlighted over here so let me click off of this and then go to the tools and see if that makes a difference no, it's not making a difference. It's probably just a glitch because I have other things running. Uh, maybe because I have this web browser running. I have other tools running. I don't know. It's not really giving me the ability to do anything else. Sometimes these tools are very smart. So, you know, the way that they're designed, they may only function a certain way also. So don't get frustrated. Just take your time. That's what I recommend. And as you go along, you'll be able to figure out the differing issues that you have and stuff like that. Like for now, it's now it brought up multiple options. It brought up a whole bunch of other options because I only clicked the vertices. And also it jumped from faces to vertices. As soon as, soon as I clicked the center, I don't know why I did that. But I'm just trying to figure out, you know, how this thing works as well because it's a, a different version from the older versions that I was using so it's still not working and none of this stuff up here is actually working for me the only thing that's working is the viewport area here okay now it's working as soon as I moved it and now it's giving me the ability to highlight these you see that so that was a glitch for sure that was a glitch in this system and it's not a hundred percent just like any other tool they should have called it um, Vectary 3.0 beta because it's not in its 100% state that it should be working. So I'm going to do Control Z and try to back that out. Whatever it did, it created something that I didn't want. And look at that. It's locked me into that position and it's changing everything. I don't know what it's doing. So I backed out of everything and now I'm going to go back to edit mode and go to bake. So now I should be able to go to these options. I don't know what the hell that was, why it got all caught up like that. And I had to control Z about six times, seven times, as y'all folks saw, in order to back out, which is not good. That's not too good. So this is more like having fun, testing, you know, playing around, manipulating, and trying to see what I can do. So, all right, now we want to create something. Let's try to create something. Um, pull this up. I don't know what I'm doing here, but let's try to create a house let's do that just for shits and giggles we're gonna use the shift key to see if we can multi select and the shift key generally on blender allows you to multi select but if you let go the shift key when you click on another point 
it will not multi select so let's try that again and hold the shift key while we select points and as you can see the points highlight in white when you multi select so I'm holding the shift key by the way folks and left clicking my left click mouse button now the gizmo here is in the way so I remember if I do remember correctly I would right click and then uh, let's see do I how do I move the gizmo without distorting the object that was bad <laughs> control Z let me back up one and go to gizmo uh, look at that now I got a, a option to change the gizmo reset position reset position nope still giving me a problem uh, I forgot exactly how to play with the actual gizmo but there's a way to move the gizmo so that it doesn't bother you so yeah that's kinda not working right um and now I don't have the ability to click on the points the way I was doing I don't know what just happened alright so here we go we're gonna try that again click on all these points actually I'm gonna click the center last and look at that the gizmo is back there all right but I got the center moved and now what I want to do is use this green bar and move the actual this segment here out to the right so we're gonna try to do that to build like a house shape you know so we're gonna we'll start with the center first try to get the gizmo out of our way cuz you know the gizmo does become a pain in a way I don't know if res resetting the position of the gizmo gave me, gave me the ability to make it shift over here but usually the gizmo will move where you choose to click and then it gets in a way alright so now I'm gonna move this green bar going this way and that shouldn't have done that oh I see why control Z I'm gonna control Z back hold on control Z and I have to deselect these so you can deselect these as well now there's a faster way to do it you can use the lasso and stuff like that so you can use the marquee the lasso select you can also use paint select and I've done that before in the past so yikes come on I totally screwed it up let's see control Z control Z um, selection jog I think selection jog actually removes let's see if it removes no it doesn't control Z I gotta learn this stuff again uh, lasso let's try lasso select there we go lasso select worked but it started to select these lines I didn't want these lines to be selected I just wanted to deselect the points which no it didn't work I'm gonna figure this figure this out so let's just do shift select and see if that works how do you deselect lines yikes well it's all good the quick way to deselect lines is just to click anywhere else other than the point or click an individual point and right now it is not working the way it's supposed to. it's supposed to be in the vertices select option so we're gonna left uh, left click select left click select scroll in left click select uh, let's see scroll in left click select alright so now we got the points that we want and we're gonna try that again drag it to the left and it doesn't necessarily look like it's gonna be a house but it looks decent it's not a horrible design but one thing I noticed about Vectary which is weird is the angles of certain things sometimes the angles of some certain things do look weird um, let's see if I can connect this point to this point uh, is there a connection a join type of option mesh tools what's mesh tools let's see this weld let's try weld 
hit one and enter. No, that didn't work. Um, so all of these tools up here give you different options. You can extrude, you can bevel, you can make circles, you can bridge. Oh, maybe it's a bridge. Let's try a bridge. All right, the bridge worked. So now I connected this point to that point. And I'm just trying to play around with the geometry to make it look a little better. Because it does look kind of bad. All right, let's bridge this. Where's it at? bridge or you can use the V key and let's get rid of these points over here so we're gonna delete that point let's try to delete that one and delete that point whoa that's crazy what I just did all right let's try to build these points back together all right We'll connect that to that and then bridge it. But how does it make those walls? I don't know. All right. Let's try to hold on a second. What are we doing here? See, there goes the gizmo got in the way right there. Let's try to bridge that together. Bridge. And what do we got now? We have to connect this segment to that segment. Uh, shift bridge and then that sec that point to that point and then bridge invalid selection why didn't they let me do that okay let me try that again bridge okay so now we got all of that working um I forgot how to create a face hmm let's see Draw lines, draw a hand, uh, bevel, cut multiples. Uh, let's see if I got any anybody um, talking. Cap boundaries, mesh tools. All right, there goes the mesh tools. Weld, weld, smooth, sub div, sub D. I guess that's subdivision, subdivision stuff. Triangulate, quantify, spare, spare five. I don't know how all those tools work per se right now. I haven't really used this tool in a while, so uh, bear with me with that part. Let's see. I'll try to make some tutorials in the future once I learn how to use all this stuff. But like I said, this is just fun, having fun with it, playing around with it, and uh, finding out all my epic fails that I can go through. Uh, pretty much, that's what having fun is all about, epic fails. Let's see. So let me just hit the F key. That doesn't do nothing. That's trying to create a face. Uh, cap boundaries. Oh, boom. Look at that. I capped the boundaries. That, that did it. That was good. But did I do it the right way? Uh, let's try this one here. So this one. This one. Oh, sorry. This one. No. I have to click on them. That one, that one, that one. Hold on. Come on. That one and that one. Let's go to cap boundaries. Unable to find a hole to cap. So there's no hole. That looks like a big he heaping, gaping, not heaping. A big gaping hole right there. Um. I have no idea what the hell is going on. All right, let's try this, this, that, and then try to cap the boundaries on that. No? Uh, I guess I don't know how to use it. Oh, well. <laughs> Yo, so, you know, this thing is, is crazy. Like, you just got to keep trying and playing around with things until you can come up with something that actually looks good or functions the way that you want it. Because right now, I'm not getting anything to work the way I want it. So, I used to be able to use this thing really, really good, though. And I was trying to create an aircraft and all kinds of different stuff. Let's see, baby. Um, collapse will definitely not do it. How about mesh tools? Go back to mesh tools and try weld. 
nose. How about smooth? No, it's not smooth. Uh, come on. They got to give us something. Give us something that actually will work. Yeah. This part isn't that great. How about we just start drawing? Let's try to draw something. Maybe that will work. Draw a line, hand drawn. All right, draw a line from there to there and there to there and connect. There we go. I think that's what I used to do. Draw lines. All right, so let's go draw a line. Connect it there. Boom. Look at that. I did it. As soon as I went to try to draw a line, look how many connected. All right. That's how we did it. Okay. <laughs> I, I apologize, folks. I forgot about that part. So there we go. Now let's try to draw again. We got to draw some lines, baby. Come on. We're going to connect this one to this one and that one to that one to that one. Something like that. Boom. Now we got something going, folks. Now we're bridging the gaps. Talking about bridging, right? <laughs> so let me get rid of this point. We're going to delete that one. And we're going to try to connect this line by drawing a line from here to here. There we go. Yeah, baby. We got it going now. So <laughs> I'm going to just create um, some quads or something like that. Or trying. <laughs> Excuse me. I apologize. That's some cereal that I had. I'm going to create some triangles. So let's go to draw lines. And we're going to go from here to here. Hold on. There we go. And we'll draw from here to here. There we go. So we created triangles. See that? And we'll delete this point and try to create the same shape that we got over there. So we'll go from here to here. Hold on one second. Oh, that was the wrong one. We're gonna control Z, get rid of that, and do it one more time. So from here to here, and there to there. Boom! It worked! Yes! Success! <laughs> yeah, we finally got some success on this stuff. And we're going to click this uh, face here, and we're going to delete that face. All right, so now we got something that looks like it's turning into something. Wow. It took some time to figure that out. All right, so um, let's create some lines over here to make a door. Something to that effect, like so. Right click. Um, we're going to use another draw line and create a, another part of the doorway, like so, which doesn't look straight, doesn't look that great, right? Now, uh, one, one thing about looks, looks are very deceiving. You can change the shader types here. See this little icon? So you can go to textured. You can also go to wired. So when you check out the wireframe, gives you the ability to go in and then you know check in detail now let's go to um, vertices and now you can see the vertices how they broke down so you can move vertices like that as well see that pretty cool so this it took me some time to figure out Vectory on that level because it's a basic 3d modeling tool on the web but it's highly advanced as well and highly intuitive. So you have to start thinking outside the box, literally, in terms of how you're going to design the shapes. Um, one of the things about it is that when you're creating these differing vertices, they're going to fall apart and your faces may not connect the way you should connect them. They have to have a specific shape and detail because Vectory is somewhat of an automated tool in terms of it senses and detects a lot of things using an algorithm I believe so um, blender is kinda like that but blender is a lot more um, easier or user friendly when it comes to creating the 3d shapes because it's not as automated and I don't think it has um, 
these auto detectors that Vectary has based on the vertices being out of place or in the right place. It's more, um, how would you say, the 3D modeling software with Blender is more of the old school type of tool. This is a little bit more high detailed and technical because they use WebGL in order to create the vertices, I think. And the vertices, the lines, the different segments, the faces are not created by an actual software tool embedded into um, like a desktop application. This is a web-based application, so they have to have more higher um, functionality and capabilities for detection. That's what I believe. I don't know per se because I'm not a developer, so I didn't come up with the tool, but I'm just assuming um, based on how they work in differential between each other. Like when I use Blender and I, and I manipulate the vertices, it's much easier to manipulate pretty much. But this one is a lot more difficult and then this um, gizmo is really crazy. It does affect everything. It does get in the way a lot. So, oh, now I figured it out. Okay, in order to move it, you're gonna right click on the gizmo and drag it. So you right click and hold the right click mouse button and then drag and the gizmo moves out the way. So that was the way we were supposed to do it and that's the previous version of um, uh, Vectary 1.0 is how you was able to do it and also 2.0. So now what I want to do is I want to delete this line segment just to make the door like a doorway. So to do that we're going to go to line and we're just going to click this line segment and we're going to delete. Now as you can see it turned red and that indication means that it's not structurally sound. See so like I said it's auto detecting and that's very very advanced like their WebGL software whatever kind of software they coded it with can detect if the structure isn't proper in order for this 3D model to turn out the way it's supposed to turn out so let's go back to shaded and look it has a hole in it so it's not a it's not gonna be a good doorway it's gonna turn into a barn without it without the door um, in place so in order to fix it, you have to put structurally sound connections in order to make it work. So I'm not sure exactly what I want to do with that, but I probably can make connection points from here to here and then connect something internally, but it's not going to look right. So I can also try to make internal double, la double layers, like in terms of walls, I can make the walls have more solid structure so that it can hold in place and it's weird that I'm talking about structure but this is a digital asset it shouldn't really matter but it does in terms of making 3D objects the structure of the 3D object matters for some reason I mean in my mind it shouldn't matter and I'm sure most people who first start out with 3D they're probably saying to themselves why does it matter it's just the program it's just a software but it I don't know the way that the pro programmers design these things they make it so that everything makes sense in, like in the real world if you're trying to create a real house or you know trying to create this or that or whatever and it, there must be some other things about 3D that I, I'm not aware of in terms of how, how it doesn't work if you have certain things structured out of place so um, let's see if I can put like some um, braces here and if the braces can hold it up so I'm gonna go uh, to the draw lines and try to cr create a connection here and here and um, I don't know try to make a brace and then try to connect from here to here and it still doesn't it won't work well another thing I can do is try to connect this whole entire area through drawing lines and that probably will work. Hold on, we're gonna do control Z, control Z, control Z, control Z, back that all the way out and we'll just draw lines. Let's try that. Draw lines from each point. Actually, I made an error right there with, with that one. So control Z and I went too far. So now we'll delete that line and there we go. All right. So we're going to go draw lines again. 
You can also use the D key. They have um, hot keys on this, so D is, is a quicker way to draw lines. So we're going to click that one, click that one, click that one, click that one, click this one, and click this one, and that one. Nope, it's not working. It's not fixing it. I'm just trying to connect all of these together. Oh, look at that. It did fix it. But now it broke this side. So let's try to fix that side. Connect that one to this one, to this one, to this one. And now this side is broken. See that? So th it's auto detection system kind of doesn't like what I did at all. It really doesn't like what I did. <laughs> all right. So another another way to do it is probably to make these connection points here back that out go back to draw lines and then make these connection points here to probably give it stability and maybe that'll work I'm not sure nope still not working all right, let's try it one more time. Let's go back to wired. And we're going to go to vertices and connect vertices. Nope, still not working. So what they're showing is in the red areas that's the structural issues this one this one this one and this one and the bottom one too yeah all that is not structurally sound I'm not sure oh let's try a brace between here and here so let's try that draw lines and we're gonna go from this point to that point and create a brace from here to here. So we'll do that from this point to that point. Now look, at it's making more structurally unsound positions. But it's OK. We're going to keep drawing. Let's try this point to, if I pull this off, it's going to be pretty dope. It's going to make this video even better than what it is because the video right now is it's okay in terms of the fun the fun side of things let's see and epic fails as well let's see let's move this over a little bit all right let's see how many people we got we got three people watching that's pretty good um all right so we're going to try to make this structurally sound hold on from that point going down to that point and we don't care about the back. Hmm. How about that? And then we'll try to create an X bar. Let's try to create an X bar from here to here. Something like that. And then this is starting to look like a freaking AutoCAD type of setup. Okay. Oh, I put cross braces. That's crazy. Let's <laughs> let's control Z. I don't even know what I'm talking about. By the way, folks, I'm just going with it. Uh, let's see. Let's try that point to the other point. Draw lines to that point. Okay, that looks okay. And. Triangles are always the strongest shape, so that will help with structural soundness, right? Should. We're going to brace the base to this this point and this point. So let's go bam, Sam, like flim flam. And then we're going to go from here to here, like flim flam. And then, yeah, we got we got some structural issues going on, folks, for sure. Now let's look at the actual shaded 
And look how many holes we have now. It's busting holes in the whole entire project. Look at that. Crazy, right? That's what I mean by it being advanced. Like it's pretty advanced. It has the algorithm is crazy. If you don't have the right shape, it breaks holes inside the faces. And then your three object is gonna look really obsolete. It's gonna look horrible. So if I don't get the right shape, it won't work. But hey, you know, you live and you learn, you do what you do what you can, you do the best that you can with what you have. Uh let's go back to wired and with the flooring we'll probably connect that to a shape with that and uh, right click there okay now I've done this before folks in in the past that's why I'm trying to do this to see if it, it works if I get some good cross bracing and stuff like that see if it works um, Let's try that and try that. Oops, that was an error. Control Z. Okay, okay, I'm reloaded. <laughs> so let's uh, try this over here. Right click and then try that over there. Nope, this is not turning out good it's really not turning out good at all it's totally destroying what I originally wanted to come up with oh well that's just too bad because I'm having fun <laughs> uh, let's try this over here draw this line to this line hope y'all get the point by now that it's really up to your creativity but you're limited to um, some of the things here with this algorithm tied into vectory so that part will most definitely frustrate you for a while to figure out how to get around it because uh, blender doesn't have that like I said all right alrighty then the only way to solidify this is probably to put a crossbar here it's the only way let's try it and see what it does All right, and from here to here. Look at that. Now it created a, a door. Watch this. We're gonna go in, go to shaded, and look, it almost created a doorway, but it busted holes through everything else. Crazy, that is just insane in the membrane. That is totally insane. Whoa, whoa. Let's see, Um, do we got anybody else? Yeah, we got three people still viewing. That's pretty good. That is totally awesome, folks. I am blown away by the fact that y'all folks are still watching. All right. So one of the other parts that kind of frustrate, well, frustrated me when I first started on Vectary is how you zoom in. Like I said in the beginning, somewhere in the beginning of the video, the live stream, where you choose to zoom the mouse will depend and determine how it angles to zoom in which is makes it really weird in terms of how to position it the best way for you to get it to work well blender you got this view option where you can change the view you also have um the gizmo thing that you can play with there's a gizmo area that you can play with to move around and navigate the screen which was an addition to blender which they can add that to vectory as well they're probably going to add it in the future where you can move you know the viewport easily with this little gizmo on the screen um, so as you can see I have a total epic fail if anybody lives in this house uh, God help them because it's it's a horrible house alright so we're gonna break out of that we definitely gonna destroy that one we don't want that project so let's go back to my projects put don't save and to end this session with a bang um, I did do some cool stuff over here I was playing around earlier and I did it with my smartphone so if y'all folks are still tuning in this is the flavor of the video this is the side of the video that y'all folks are gonna love um, more than likely you're gonna love it because if you have at least the Samsung Galaxy S8 I got a Samsung Galaxy S8 Plus 
and I was able to create this that you're gonna see here with my phone so how did I do this it's really not much it's just a box that was deformed I created a 3d texture or I used a, a 3d uh, image of a graph some kind of a 3d object that I created in blender and I overlaid it as a texture for this distorted box looking shape now this here is a sphere inside of more like a crushed cube and that came from Vectary so that was like the defaulted um, 3d 3 models the default archive 3d models which you can get over let's see it's not primitive shapes you go over to library click on library and then you can pull down all these collection options which is not allowing me to scroll right now which I don't know why but you go over here to the right and you should be able to scroll through and now I can scroll through so I just clicked on one I guess they only give you like up to four different archives and then you can just scroll through and see what you want and I don't like that one this one's pretty cool they have some that look like they monetize but right now I have the premium version so I probably am getting everything for free um, I actually am more like a veteran user so ever since they started Vectory about a year ago or so year and a half ago I've been on it using it I was more of a, a beta alpha tester so they gave me the ability to have the the subscription version for free so I have a subscription version I can export if you go to export I have the ability to export object files day files USD Z I have GLB I have GLTF and STL for 3D printing things like that I can do all these different things which I learned of these different file types not all of them but the USDZ is augmented reality and that's what they're trying to push hard on Vectari 3.0 the ability to create 3D assets for AR so for augmented reality also you can create GLB files for Facebook 3D posts so if you're creating Facebook posts and you want people to see um, you're showing off in 3D what you can create in your different 3D assets and stuff like that and you want them to see something really cool or you want to create an awesome message or maybe a digital gift for people you can do all that stuff and send uh, GLB files through your smartphone I believe it's gonna work on my smartphone so I'm gonna try to test it and see if I get this to test run off of this live session which I never done it before I actually downloaded it though this morning a GLB file of this actual um, 3D project project that you see here and uh, GLTF it says uh, GL transformation transmission I should say GL transmission format and I'm not sure exactly what that does but I do know um, they have a really awesome tool called Vroid and it's a character builder type of tool that you can utilize through the Steam store and the file types are GLTF and then you can use that to convert to blend files um, once you get the object, the 3D object into Blender. So I don't know if that is something similar to this one, GLTF. Uh, the STL, like I said, is for 3D printing. So if you're into 3D printing, you can download and you can do original size. You can change the sizes uh, to 20 by 48 pixels, 10 by 24. 512 pixels or 256 or 128 small size pixel sizes and that's basically screen sizes that it's going to come out as and um, it may uh, convert directly to a specific size format for your 3d printer I don't know exactly how that works because I never did any 3d printing but whatever it's all good uh, if you want the largest scale you go for the larger scale if you want the smallest or the middle middle size scale you go to the middle size uh, OBJs. What are OBJs? OBJs are just basic um, object files. So any 3D object that you have, 3D asset, will come in the basic format of an OBJ file. So if you want to download it to Blender or whatever, you click download and that should download it to Blender. And at the tail end of this live session, I'm going to try to download that initial project that y'all folks saw with the graphic of the female onto Blender. 
with the actual chair and see if that goes over the blender. Since Vectory gave me the subscription for free, I should be able to utilize it on Blender and test it and play with it and see what happens. So uh, the day files, day files are mainly for video games. If you're trying to become a game developer or something like that, I learned that um, through trying to learn how to create the face rig, uh, actual customized characters, I should say. So if y'all folks ever use face rig before, which is a really awesome tool where you can use your webcam to control 3D assets and avatars that's built into it, then, and if you ever tried to create your own custom models to import into FaceRig, then you'll know what a day file is. And also, if you're into game development, um, day files help to you know get game platforms, gaming platforms, the differing files to work a little bit better because they require lower uh, animations in terms of the file types and lower, um, how would you say, lower poly, poly polygons. So you have to have low, low counts on your polygons. Polygons deals with um, what you're creating in your three, three assets, how many polygons you're using to create your three assets. If you have a high count, it might not work for a video game development um, project. And I'm not a video game developer, but I know that from learning the basics to 3D. Um, that's one of the basics that you have to know in, in terms of trying to pipeline your three assets from one tool to the next tool and getting it to output or to export properly and import properly. So um, other than that, what we're going to show, let's move over to the smartphone. So I'm going to go uh, minimize, minimize, and I'm going to tap the screen to control my smartphone. So now I'm controlling the live session on my smartphone is only one person which is cool um, it's probably me watching myself but it's all good we're gonna go and we are going to maximize the screen and we're gonna bring up the bottom and minimize that and then by the way I'm using side sync so thanks a lot to side sync for giving us the capability to mirror our screens for our smartphone uh, capabilities so I'm using the Samsung Galaxy S8 Plus and I'm mirroring the screen so y'all folks can see what I was able to do. Uh, so what we're going to do is go to Google Chrome, use the Google Chrome mobile app, and we're going to go to Vectary. And I'm going to turn it horizontally, and it should turn. So actually, I'm probably going to have to go out, disconnect. Let's disconnect first. Phone screen and then reconnect and it should give me uh, no it's not giving me the ability to go horizontal so hold on let's drag the top down click this option hmm it's not giving me the ability auto rotate screen hold on let's see what it says auto rotate screen cannot be turned on while using side sync ah oh, that sucks well, it's all good. Let's go back. The reason why I wanted to rotate it is so y'all folks can see the capabilities that I can pull off on Vectary. So what we're going to do is hit the three tiny dots. If you have a mobile a web browser, you want to go to desktop site. And that should give you the full capability of a desktop computer. So the three tiny dots in the upper right corner, go to desktop site whatever mobile web browser you have usually you'll have the three tiny dots which gives you the settings option and then what you're gonna do is go I'm gonna go to my dashboard and I'm gonna show you all folks from my mobile web browser this is my mobile version how it comes up off my Samsung Galaxy S8 Plus which is pretty powerful I'm gonna do a separate video for y'all folks to see this um, um, I'll probably try to do it off of a mobile uh, version on my my computer through one of my uh, emulators. I have a what do they call it? The Android emulators. So I have Android emulator tools. And for now, it is not coming up. Not sure why. Let's try it again. There we go. So it just came up. And we're gonna throw in this character like I did. I'm gonna bring her up, and it should come up in the screen. If it doesn't, it's probably not powerful enough. 
um, to project it because it requires a lot of data to go through for a full-fledged project so we'll see if it works it works so um, like I like I said if I had the horizontal uh, landscape mode you would be able to see it like a computer a regular computer on your phone and uh, I think that's pretty powerful that you can do it through a mobile web browser using Vectary in the past the older versions of Vectary it didn't work hundred percent now I'm able to model to create an actual model using my phone now and um, view whatever I have look at this it came up so the shader should come through eventually there it goes so the shader went through I'm gonna scroll down a little bit so you can see her on my mobile phone which is crazy so this is this is some powerful stuff folks it's really really no joke what you can do today um, pretty powerful so let's try to navigate as you can see I'm navigating on my phone the 3d viewport let's play around with the environment settings so with the environment settings I believe um, somewhere up here hmm I can't really see everything this might be it here well let's go back to the regular vectory to see where the environment settings are. So snap to grid, yada yada. Export. Um, let's go to object. Import. Image. 3D primitives. Lights. There goes the lights. Oh, if you wanted to bring in different objects, that's what that is. Um, let's go to library. Yeah, I think it's in the library. Materials, assets, environments. There we go. So we got to go to library. So let's bounce back. Go to library, which is here. And then go to the back part and try to change the environment. So how the environments work, it just changes the background lighting the background itself and the lighting it as well so you get to see your character in a different light pretty much which is pretty dope or 3d assets that you have in there in your scene as you can see look how powerful that is so I can zoom her in and you can see much more quality on it pretty high quality and let's see if I can rotate zoom in on her face now um, let's try to render while we're in the mobile get mobile browser so the render option if I can see it I think this is render here I'm gonna click that it's very hard to see because it's so small so this is the quality this is the draft thing let's go to ultra and we're going to click this little button here and you'll see the, the little icon moving I'm not sure if I can see it very very hard to see let's click it again there it is now it's moving so then now it's rendering I'm going to click out of the object and see how high quality is going to bring for render so I just want to see her face to some degree and how good it's going to look or not. So it's not even at 100%. It's still moving. See that? So you can really come up with some very high, high quality renders even with your smartphone, which is crazy. And then you can screenshot it if you want and move it through to Instagram as fast as you want. That's pretty dope like right now I can take a screenshot of this and just move it to Instagram but the problem like like I was saying the screen you know it's not optimized for a smartphone so you would have to turn the screen sideways you know for more like a computer shape or else you're gonna get this slender graphic and it's not gonna look that great 
so still moving it's not at a hundred percent it's somewhat slower than a computer would be so now that you folks are staring at this let's move over and we're gonna try it on the computer side here so now you understand the environment hopefully you understand the environment to some degree you can play with these differing environments you just click on them and it changes the environment lighting on blender it would be more like changing the HDRI settings so you would have to go into environment light shader shader editor uh, area or well, go into the shader editor area and then change the environment um, light which takes understanding of the node editor so if you don't know the node editor you don't understand how the node editor works then you won't be able to pull that off because you have to know certain connections which is really easy but it's just something you gotta go dig for the information to find out how it works see I'm just changing I keep changing the, the background lighting and settings for environments which they're not that great but they work so you also can add lights besides these environment settings so go back to object go to lights here if I want I can add a hemi hemisphere light a rectangle light a directional light a tube light a spotlight and a sphere so if you add a light it will bring in a source I already have two point lights it will bring in a new source to your scene and right now it's not adding it it's just taking time for some reason freezing okay actually I got three point lights here goes the spotlight now I got a spotlight and a directional light so I the problem is that I don't see it so I'm gonna click on this one move it over now you can see it see it does have the lights in there and you'll be able to see it on the object if you move close the light is on the object now see that and you can move it closer to the object to change the light settings you know there's different things you could do you can change the light settings here you can make the light a different color and then it will affect the object differently based on the color settings let's see see now it's close and this is pink let's turn it more like a I don't know yellow can't really see it that well because this is blue but if it was white you would be able to tell the difference of the color and also this environment is pretty bright so you have to go to the environment and make it dark to some degree and then you can see the light see now it's yellow here see that and now I can go back to object mode and then change the lighting like this see now I'm cha changing it to red zoom in and see if we can get the light controls there reposition it how I see fit and play with the light settings so you can play with all these different light settings I'm not changing the settings so that's why it's not giving me a different intensity but I would have to play with the settings to see what I can do with the color but at least there you can, oh that is bright so you can see there now we're gonna scroll through the colors see that there you go with that um, you also can play around with um, besides the lighting uh, the render you go to render and then you can add other quality levels Right now it's not rendering, but if I wanted to render, I just have to hit this draft and go to Ultra. And right now, look at all this. It's actually 
glowing and that glow effect is from let's see uh, effects so you go to effects it's the bloom so the bloom is on if you shut the bloom off just like on blender it will go off and you won't be able to have that glow but if you shut it on now you're gonna got you're gonna get this glow effect on your objects so I got saturation on as well I have other effects that are on got noise the vignette was off but when you turn the vignette on as you can see now it gives an, a different appearance to the graphic so the, the graphic starts to get more of you know shape and contour showing because of the shadow with the vignette it creates more shadow in the background um, what else do I have the noise I like off because it gets rid of some of the brightness so I leave the noise off but you may want it for certain reasons or whatever and um, yeah other than that there's all kinds of things you could do this is another light uh, I think this is the directional light no that's not the directional light here goes the directional light that's probably a spotlight but depends on what type of lighting you want and light settings you can play around with all of that and then render out how you want your scene to see to look like I haven't really played that that much with the lighting but I do understand to some degree you got position rotation you can rotate it you can play around and change the angle of the direction light see the direction of light creating a shadow let me show you all folks that see the shadow creation try to move it up a little bit better there we go see so you can play around with lighting for shadows and stuff like that different effects and then whatever view you want to create in your 3D scene that's up to you but that's that um, all that stuff you can do on your, your mobile phone as well while you're rendering now I'm rendering around 59 this is a sample right here it's going up to 89 going almost up it went up to 100 then it has a pause button they also have this uh, safe render mode which is new and that's for um, Mac computers I think I just now detected it by looking at it actually today I should say so the safe render mode is off currently so you won't be able to use that at the moment other than that you have many many other options you can embed um, I think that's available for free for the free version you can go to share and with the share you can share on to Vectary to create a public page uh, my mini factory and sketchfab uh, I think with the free version you only have up to five projects that you can create and you have to share those through the Vectary uh, community so other people can use your objects and stuff you can keep uh, five I think private and you may be able to share up to unlimited I don't know exactly how the the free works but it used to be like that where you uh, create three was it no not three five five private projects and then the rest have to be shared on the community so and then also when you share it you basically giving people rights to utilize it and edit it and do different things to it but they've been changing the payment scale and the business model of Vectory multiple times so I will have to do some research to check into the business model side of of that part in pertaining to the licensing of what you are issuing them and what they're giving you what they're granting you in terms of you sharing it to the community and stuff like that if they change any of that, any of that stuff it's going to be in the terms and also in the documentation that's tied together with Vectory in the past they were trying to get people to share to Facebook because they wanted to promote it and how you would do that you you could make a promotional post um, it would create a promotional post basically for you to promote your content and in return you're sharing Vectary to the world so Vectary would get noticed on Facebook and stuff like that but I think they stopped that and um, if you wanted to create uh, more like an object file you would have to do it back then like that but now that they monetize with subscriptions it's a little little different and that part I think went away and this team thing I haven't went into the team thing but this is the reason why I didn't go into it 
because you would have to pay $49 as a studio or as a company $199 in order to get into the into the collaborative side and I don't have anybody I'm working with in 3d so I don't even need this studio thing so I do everything on my own and I use uh, YouTube videos to learn everything tutorial guides and whoever comes up with stuff on the internet in general regarding 3d I just dig and do research and I keep finding out things and learning things and I keep going uh, that's what I recommend for anybody um, you don't necessarily have to go to school but if you do go to school they're probably gonna have a regimented detail and they're gonna only teach you what they want you to know but the benefit of having the online world you can learn as much as you want and you're not limited um, to a curriculum a core curriculum of what it is that you should do the only limitation though in that respect is that you're not going to learn um, in fine-tuned detail with a critical path method or with um, more of a, a direct uh, curriculum guide you know if you if you do it on your own you pr pretty much gonna be scattered with your knowledge base you're not gonna know exactly where to go first that's why it's so hard to understand blender if you're trying to learn blender that's why it's probably very hard for you to start with Vectary if you have no idea what the hell you're doing in 3d because you just don't understand the tools you look at the stuff and you're like what should, what is this wow this looks very complicated I don't know what the hell to do you see all this and you end up getting intimidated by a lot of this stuff but in reality it's very very easy um, in terms of what you actually have to implement with your mouse and, and controlling the screen and um, being able to move around and click mouse click and stuff like that those things are very simple but to understand what these options do may throw you off starting out you know what I'm saying so it just takes time like right now I'm clicking on this box says box baked so what it did when I selected it in this uh, left screen option here it also opened up a right screen option for it so it brought up this box material one and then it gives me the ability to manipulate the the data that's in it so I can manipulate the graphics in it if I wanted to I can select this option over here where it has a hex and it has this number code the number code is the color code which basically is details of this color color that I'm moving here so I want it to be white it's gonna set the color code to number F F F F F so it's coded and the algorithm is coded on Vectary to be very intuitive so it detects the color key type as soon as you move the mouse in this color screen here so you don't have to worry about typing something in you just move it and it automatically changes to that number and it will update auto update to try to update the color now the only way that will work is if you don't have a graphic in here you would have to click this little icon here in the back and that brings up an option to upload your own graphic this is the same thing that's on Vroid which I mentioned earlier about the Vroid part um, some people may not realize that you can change the Vroid characters um, assets in terms of trying to add your own textures to it so the texture graphic information is just a PNG file a, fo a photo an image file so we'll go into um, the reason why it's a PNG is because it has a vector vector graphics so vector graphics um, is what PNG files have and is a little different from JPEG or um, the BMP or whatever we're gonna go in and upload something it doesn't matter what it is you can upload any graphic right but if it doesn't have UV map material data then it won't map over it properly so that that graphic will imitate what is in real life so instead it's just gonna put up whatever you choose to add and overlay on top of a 3d asset so I'll give you a good example let's put me with the money in the background right we're gonna open it and that's gonna overlay on top of this 3d asset so now we're going to go back to object mode and you'll see that the money is in this graphic but I have to move the material color to white in order for you to see it so this is the kind of stuff that people don't realize that it's doable you can play around with 3D and create 
unimaginable things, things that you didn't imagine that you can create because all you're doing is overlaying graphics on top of a 3D asset. The asset is consisting of vertices, lines, segments, and faces that construct into a 3D asset. Now the UV information or also known as the, the vector X and Y coordinate information is documented and detailed as a data file in a PNG file and that image graphic will go and overlay on top of it based on the data points that a UV map would be used to image onto a 3D asset. But this particular object that I created has no UVs. It's not created with a UV map. So I don't care what it looks like. I just chose to put anything on top of it. But I learned some of that stuff as well by watching tons of YouTube videos. And I just kept watching and watching and watching until over time I started to realize what a UV is. A U and a V. It's an X and Y coordinate. That's all it is. And it details where the graphics are going to be laid onto the screen for a 3D asset. So once you start to puzzle these things together, your mind will literally leap through the screen. And you'll start to be able to create stuff that... You're saying to yourself, like, wow, how do these people create this stuff? Well, over time, they did research, and they figured it out, and then they were able to start creating things that are amazing. But you're going to need, like, something like Blender or Maya or something more advanced to be able to create the UV maps properly. I don't know if you can create the UV maps on Vectory, but it does give you UV mapping options here. It says UV mapping. So I don't know, per se if that works to a certain level or not so I'll, po I'll probably try to play with it and manipulate it in the future once I learn how to UV map myself because I'm really not a, into texturing to the point of UV mapping on Blender I haven't got into it yet I just learned about it so I understand how it works I understand the, the underlining concepts behind it but I just haven't done it. I haven't really done too much with it. I played a little bit with it and I tried to mess with it, but it's not that user friendly. It's not that easy to, to understand because some of it gets a little complex where they have differing um, levels of UV mapping. Sometimes the UV map will disappear and or be very, very tiny and small. You won't be able to see it. So you have to learn how to use the, the on screen functions and also the hidden keys which they have hotkeys and be able to move the different UV maps around and all kinds of different stuff so that you can map out where the graphics should be placed on your 3D asset. So that's that part. Um, once you learn that part, you can really get good at creating 3D stuff and making it look awesome. Because as you can see, my face is right here on this box. How the hell did my face get on this box? Or this weird distorted box? Well. Vectory gives you the tools to put it in and implement it, but you have to understand where to go. You have to understand what you just clicked on. How, to, how did I click on this box? Well, I just went over here, left clicked, now the box is activated. So if I click on the spotlight, now look what happens over here. The UV map stuff, <clears throat> all that option stuff that I had disappears. Now it gives me the options to 